Got another Sony Handycam in this time. It's a CCD TR101 Hi8 with optical image stabilization. And this was one of the first that had their optical image stabilization on it. Works quite well. Anyway, this one here is completely dead. It has no power on play, no power on record. We're gonna see if we can get this one going. And this one's a little bit more of a challenge due to how it's constructed. This time I have a CCD TR101 and the complaint on this one is no power. Let's check it out. I see no light. Nothing happening whatsoever. We'll check it with the external power supply just to make sure it's just not the Sony power supply not making a connection. I see about 60 milliamps of current being drawn. So this one's dead. Let's pop it apart and see why. First thing we'll do is to check the fuses on it, make sure that the fuses aren't blown. Fuses are in the back on these ones. They have a little compartment that holds the fuse. There should be three fuses if it's the same as the others. There'll be three little Pico fuses. This camera stinks. This one is from, uh, what year is this one from? 93. It stinks like capacitors. That's what this one smells like. Either that or someone's dog uses it as a toilet. Shouldn't joke about that because I have had that happen. About probably 30 years ago now. I was working on a um, Sony XBR, the projection, the KPR36 XBR. Looked like the KV25 XBR, but it was, um, you know, it was the pedestal set, but it was a projector. It wasn't a separate 25 TV sitting on a stand. It was a projector, and all the, the, the three tubes were down in the bottom of what looked like the pedestal base. And uh, anyway, uh, I'm working on this set. And I made a comment out front to the guys out front. I said, I was working on it. And I said, this, this set smells like piss. And all of a sudden, there's laughter from the front. <laughs> the guys come in the back and they're just killing themselves laughing. And uh, I pull the cover off, pull the base off it, and the circuit board's just soaking wet. Dog lifted his leg on the TV. I said, okay, I'm not fixing this one. Marv, it's yours. <laughs> he was laughing too. I said, nope, sorry, not working on this one. All right, first. Oh, this is just reeks, this camera. First things first, let's check the fuses and see if the fuses are popped. They're inside here. This just pops open. Three fuses. Open, open, good. Two blown fuses, hmm. You think that might be what's wrong with this, is two blown fuses? More likely, 
could very well be that there's something else that's causing that caused the fuses to blow. They're 1.6 amp fuses. Um, I don't have any fuses like that. I'm just going to use a single strand of wire, a little single strand of very, very, very fine wire from this is from an HDMI cable or is it LVDS? Maybe LVDS actually. Single strand of wire across those pop fuses. If there's something catastrophic, it will pop them. It'll blow that just as fast as anything else. Uh, which two were popped? Was it 901 and 902 or 902 and 903? It was 902 and 903. Two fuses popped. Okay, let's just bridge those out and see if this thing will turn on. It's uh, would probably not permit much more current if if as if as much as the as the one point six amp fuse would. All right, there we go. Two new fuses. Believe me, if, they're, if this thing draws more than one and a half amps, those are going to pop anyway. So I'm not too worried. Okay, that goes back together like that. Back into the camera and power it up and see whether the camera will fire up or whether we'll get smoke. We won't get any smoke. Trust me. If there's anything that's shorted in there, those fuses are going to pop again. But this thing could have been wet or anything, right? Uh, I'll power it up with my power supply because I can limit the current on my power supply. I'll limit it to one amp because I know that it's not going to draw any more than an amp. These these cameras usually draw about a half an amp when they're operational, so I'll limit the current down at like 900 milliamps. That way, if there is a fault, it's not going to go any further, and I'll see my power supply shoot right up to maximum power. And uh, and we have we're drawing 600 milliamps, which sounds about right. I have a lighting up viewfinder. How about if I turn on the camera? Will the camera section light up? Oh yeah, you see, I have a picture. This camera may work. Okay, I've had the camera powered up for a while now. It's not drawing any excessive current. So let's try it out and see if it will play my tape. There was already a tape in there, but I'm not going to show you that tape because, well, I don't know who it is. Not the person I got it from, though. I know that much. And here's playback. As you can see, the little CRT monitor is also working. I have to shade it from the light, otherwise there's just too much light in here. You can see here where someone's got the sun focus in the viewfinder and melt the plastic. The camera plays. Let's see if it records. Let me grab another tape that I can record on. We'll do a test recording. And the microphone's not plugged in at the moment. So I'll plug that in and do a test recording. And then we'll locate a couple new fuses and replace those fuses with proper fuses even though the wires will be fine. I'm sure I've got some of these fuses around here on an old camera that I can pull. Um, just, just to do that. Okay, power it on. And I see a picture from the camera. And the zoom works. Zoom out and zoom in. That works. Okay, we can see some capacitor issues on this right now because, uh, well, we can see some interference. I'm just going to make sure there's nothing on the tape that I want to erase. I think it's just test footage that's on here. As well as declaring. Okay, okay, so that's something I recorded before. We can record over top of this. So you can, you can see that there's herringbone on here so there's capacitors that for sure need to be changed out on this. We'll pull the camera apart and uh, see which ones need to be done. There's going to be a few I'm sure that I could change out on this to make this camera work better. I just want to get kind of a preliminary and see how it's working. So I'll go back into play. Need to be done with 
sure Actually, you know what? <laughs> it doesn't. It plays fine. Now, what the heck? You know what it is, right? The high frequency noise is not capable of being recorded. So, it is recording. Can it be made better? More than likely. Unplug that. So the microphone's working. This is kind of a neat one. This one here had a remote commander that you could spin around 360 degrees, like a little periscope. That was the remote receiver. So if you were behind the camera, you could aim this wherever you were. We were going to be with the remote control to control it, and then turn it off. It has three microphones on it. And also, this was uh, the first of the steady or steady shot cameras that actually had a lens that moved. If we undo this giant 52 millimeter, I guess I can't take that off. But <clears throat> there's a lens filter on there. But anyway, inside there, the lens actually physically moves. Okay, I put two new fuses in. If we look down at the lens, <clears throat> this is an active steady shot. You'll actually see the lens move. If I turn it off, you'll see it. See, it's off now. Turn it back on. So the lens actually moves on this one. You can see it tilting. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but I can certainly see it here. You can see the, the lens itself actually moving. It's kind of neat. It's similar to how the one on my camera here operates, <clears throat> although the newer ones are are even more steady, as they say. But if you look, you can see the lens moving inside. See the internal lens moving? This is a newer version. It's even more extreme. Okay, this one's active steady shot that I have on my little FDR AX33. The 53 which I'm shooting this with has exactly the same but you can see how much the lens can actually move on this one to keep the image steady. Well the 101 was the first generation of that same type of lens. You can see it moving in there. I don't know how it comes across on camera but from my angle where I am I can actually see the lens moving. An early version of active steady shot. This was the first camera that it was on. And this is, the, of course, the, the latest version, which is a whole lot better. But achieves the same thing. The camera has a fair bit of high frequency noise, so it's going to be capacitors that have gone bad in the camera section, more than likely. So I'll just pull this one apart, see if we can find them and replace a few. Now, I don't think that's what popped the fuses. I think probably what popped the fuses was trying to use it with a bad battery. See, what happens is these use nickel cadmium batteries, and if you had a cell that went bad, the other cells would put out more current to compensate for the cell that had failed. And what happened a lot of times was you ended up popping fuses because as the voltage went down the current went up and when the current went up it exceeded what the fuse was rated at and the fuse blew. So that's usually what caused them to fail on video cameras. The audio board on this one's right here and the video board or camera board is down here. And they don't know that there's a lot of uh, electrolytics on this one. 
a little different camera to work on than than uh, some of the others just because of the extra uh, circuitry for the steady shot because it's got a bunch of servos that actually move the lens so a lot more circuitry on this one but I'm more interested in some of the, the uh, power supply filters in the camera section it should be right under here looks like somebody's been in here I like that's been unsoldered that shield before it's been undone just undo that that's for the headphone that's loose too that screw is really loose it's not even not even finger tight let's get that out of the way for now This entire board is going to flip up on this one. Remove this bracket. And there's one cap down here. Unplug this. Unplug the switch block on the top. And unplug this plug over here. And I don't think these two boards separate. They are hard connected together. That one's likely the, the culprit, that one right there, as in the power supply for the camera. If I remove these three screws, I should be able to lift the camera section off of this board. that I'll do this one and I think it lifts off now I'll do that and I'll do a couple of ground screws I'll just unsolder the wires it's easier unsolder the two ground wires and the camera board should lift away mostly I'll do that plug Okay, that's the CCD board removed in the lens assembly. I just want to get at the uh, at this board. There's only one electrolytic, one or two electrolytics on here that I have to worry about, and it's right on the other side of the board here. Most of the caps on here are solid, as you can see. They were starting to move away from electrolytics by the time this one was produced, and I think that board plugs into the other board, but it's on the back side of it. If I'm not mistaken, it's think it plugs in on the other side but it might be hard it might be soldered on some of these cameras they didn't put plugs on the boards like when you if you had to replace a board you had to replace everything I don't know whether this one's plugged or not there's two surface mounted caps on this board but since it plays okay those ones I think are probably okay at this point
Yeah, no, it doesn't unplug. Yikes. That's what I was afraid of. I, I thought this didn't have, didn't have a plug on this one. Um, makes it things, it just kicks it up a notch, a little, you know, as far as servicing goes, because uh, we can't remove the board. We have to work on it sandwiched to the other board, and of course that's always going to create a risk of this ribbon cable being damaged. I was afraid of that. Because I remember Sony had a couple of models that they, they did not put connectors on. Why, I couldn't tell you. But uh, this is one of them. The two main boards were permanently attached at the factory by a ribbon cable. And when you replace the board, you basically replaced both of them at the same time. Because it's a real pain in the ass to try to separate them. I'm going to remove this shield. And I'm going to... Well, we can test this cap. Now, that's going to be the one right there that's that's at fault for sure. That's causing all that noise on the camera picture. Yeah, 17. Yeah, that's bad. I'm going to change that one out. Probably the only one I'm going to try and attempt to change on this one. See, not only is this a shield, but it's also a heat sink for these ICs. All right, now I got to remove this bad cap without uh, putting any stress on this ribbon. We'll cut it out like usual. and remove the remaining pins. heat sink back in place.
Okay, now if we bend this over so that it won't touch anything, hopefully it'll fit. Very tight fit in here, but that's the best we can do. Turn the board back over. The lens goes back on. in there and then the three screws to hold the lens in place plugs back in that I took out. Ground wires back on. Should give me clearance to put that plug in. goes in right there. Now the bottom of base can go on. I'll 
thought we can test this for video before I plug in the microphone because we had bad video before we had noisy pictures so if we plug in the camera and turn it on and hook up power before I even put on the microphone I should see a picture and I see a picture and it's clear there look at that Okay, now I guess I'll put the front cover on and uh, we'll test it. So side cover has to go on first on this one, I think. The side cover on there. And then the front nose cone has to go on. Because that's just the way that this one is built. Uh, where's my front cone? There's the nose cone there for the sound, the microphone, and the remote control and all that crap. plugs here throw some screws in it all right this camera's back together there's the picture off the camera it's Nice and clean now. We'll hit record. Recording. The steady shot on this actually works pretty good too. Like I can shake the camera and it uh, holds it quite steady. So I'm sure there's other caps that probably should be replaced and that's like the audio board. Is this on auto or manual focus? Uh, where are we here? I don't even know which one's which. That's on autofocus, okay. There we go. And if I put my hand in close, it'll focus on my hand. There we go, back in focus. Okay, so making my test recording and um, we'll play it back. Okay, we're gonna play back the recording. I'm just rewinding the tape. Okay, let's hear all the sounds and shaking the camera. And it's actually doing a pretty good job of keeping it still. It really worked well, even though it being zoomed in. It worked quite well. You can actually see instability while I'm shaking it there. I'm disturbing the servo. Should be replaced in this, like the audio board, just on auto or manual focus. Uh, we're over here. pre-recorded tape. I haven't got the side cover on yet. Play back my other tape, my pre-recorded tape. So, uh, picture's looking okay. I'm sure the other caps probably will need to be done at some point. I don't know how far the person owns us, how much money they want to spend on it. Um, but it was it was brought in and it was dead. Had a couple pop fuses which I've salvaged from another camera. I'll put the cover back on here now, and um, I'll say this one here is probably as good as it's going to be, considering that it's 30 years old. It's not in bad shape at all for a 30-year-old camera. One bad, one cap that was really bad, causing a very bad picture off the camera. But other than that, just a couple of uh, pop fuses. 
and as I say, as I said before, um, most of the time these fuses they failed just because uh, someone tried to power it up with a battery that was out of spec. The battery was shot, and it draws too much current. Either that or that. I mean, that certainly that cap could have you know, been causing the circuit to draw too much power. Highly unlikely, though, because there was two fuses blown, not just one. So, um, either a power supply had failed, and it was too much voltage, or it had a surge, or um, more than likely, weak battery caused it. I was looking for the one screw that I had left over, and I just found it right there. Okay, one more save from the scrap heap. Thanks for watching.